a walk to remember, a brief history during the history and the modern techniques and the modern aisles. So, uh, Italian scientist Tadini in the mid 18th century first considered that an aisle can be implanted, implanted in the human eye. In 1795, Casameta implanted a glass aisle which sank posteriorly, unfortunately. Uh, but it was the English uh, uh, ophthalmologist Sir Nicholas Harold Lyad Ridley in the 29th November 1949 uh, with the mark of first successful implantation of an artificial intraocular lens. After doing ECCE in a 45 year old female. But there was a refractive surprise of minus 24 diopter and uh, 6 diopter cylinder. So, resurgery was planned in the 8th February 1950. So, these are the generations of the intraocular lenses. The first generation are the biconvex polymethyl myth acrylate posterior chamber intraocular lenses and they are implanted behind the iris after doing the extra capsular cataract extraction. They had a diameter of 8.32 millimeter and power range from minus 24 to plus 24 adapter. But they didn't have any support, any haptic to support the optical part. So they have lots of complication. They were heavyweight also 2.5 gram. So very one third of the weight of an eye. The eye has 7.5 gram average weight. So it has 2.5 gram, so huge weight. So it uh, sanks inferiorly and also the posterior dislocation was very common along with the endothelial decompensation and glaucoma. So the next generation aisle were the early anterior chamber intraocular lenses. Uh, so the fixation of was lens was done in the angle recess, but it also has lots of complication like uveitis, endothelial decompensation, glaucoma, and hyphema. Then the third generation intraocular lenses, they were iris supported intraocular lenses. The video showing the implantation of the anterior fixation of the iris claw lens in the anterior chamber. With the help of the dialer, it is fixed in a plane and at the 3 and the 9 o'clock position will be fixed to the anterior chamber with a little enclavation. The iris tissue is enclavated between the haptic. Both the side, first side is fixed, now the other side. The help of the enclavator. But it is not the uh, natural position of the lens. And also it is not cosmetically good. So we can fix this aisle, the vaulted aisle, retropupillary. The superior incision, the aisle is inserted into the anterior chamber. The cohesive viscoelastic material maintain the anterior chamber depth. Entry through the side port. It is fixed. Retropupillary. The first haptic
now retropapillary fixation of the other haptic. So this is very near to the natural position of the lens and also it looks cosmetically very good. Then the generation 4 type of the intraocular lenses, they were the intermediate anterior chamber intraocular lenses. They were made up of the flexible loops with multiple point of fixation. They have more stable and lesser complication. The first one in the choice type of the intermediate ACL, second one is the Mark 9th and the third one is the Kalman type of the intermediate anterior chamber intraocular lenses. The video showing the implantation of the anterior chamber intraocular lenses. Decision made in the superior part. Then a sheet is pushed into the anterior chamber, and above that, the anterior chamber intraocular lens is inserted into the anterior chamber. Very, uh, you can see the surgery is very traumatic. The chances of endothelial decompensation and the desmates detachment is very common while inser inserting the anterior chamber intraocular lenses. They are obsolete in many countries now. With the help of the haptics that is fixed in the anterior chamber. And the section is sutured. Then the generation fifth type of the intraocular lenses. They were the J shaped haptic and the T shaped haptic with the attached to the optical part. Now the latest uh, generation is the sixth generation. They are the aspheric intraocular lenses, multifocal intraocular lenses, the accommodative intraocular lens, and the toricaal. The video showing the aspheric aal implantation was a 5.5 millimeter continuous curvilinear capsular axis is made. Then PECO is done. Please power setup and more the vacuum so that no burning of the endothelia. Second part of the nucleus is engulfed to the FACO probe. Now it, everything is clear, the epinucleus and the cortex has been removed, now the implantation of the aspheric intraocular lens, hydrophobic. You can see how it unfolds slowly, very slowly, so you have ample time to manipulate and put it, the other trailing haptic into the bag. It takes a very good centration on its own, no need to manipulate. Now it's well centered. Now we take a few cases and discuss the different type of the modern intraocular lenses. A 55 year old male, the K1 is the 44.50 and K2 is the 44.75. These are the corneal curvature diameter and he drives a lot during night. What kind of eye will he need? In the young eye, you can see the cornea has positive 
spherical aberration and the natural lens has negative spherical aberration in born but at the age progresses the lenticular changes the refractive index increases and the nuclear serotic changes causes the negative aberration to change into positive so there will be a enhancement of the aberration there will be distortion of the image so this patient need a hydrophobic aspheric kind of intraocular implantation So there are two type of uh, spherical aberration. First is the negative spherical aberration, and second is the positive spherical aberration. When the rays are focused in front of the retina, and one behind the retina. Because of the aberration, there is blurring. So this kind of image, the patient can see. So difference between the conventional uh, spherical aisle and the aspherical you can see the crisp clear vision is seen in the hydrophobic aspheric type of intraocular lens then the chromatic aberration the different wavelengths uh, of different colors they are not focused on one focal plane so uh, this aisle should be chromatic aberration free uh, now a second case a posterior polar cataract 60 year old there is a rent doing the surgery so surgeon has done anterior vitrectomy but the excess margins are intact 5.5 mm in this case we can use a three piece foldable intraocular lens these haptics are made of pmma so they help in the centration and proper fixation will be a well centered intraocular lens now the other case a 55 year old female housewife she doesn't drives no astigmatism the intraocular power is 22 diopter and she has a good iq in this case we need a multifocal type of intraocular lens so it has different zones you can see the central part then the different zones so it has optics with the power of the distant as well as the near vision and this type of aisle requires a very good visual cortical neuro adaptation now the other case there is a unifocal aisle implantation already in an eye but there is a refractive surprise with plus 6 diopter spherical and minus 1.5 cylinder leading to a 6 by 6 uh, vision in this case we need a sulcoflex type of aisle means a secondary aisle is implanted in front of the other aisle the one is in the back and the other is implanted in the ciliary sulcus so this is a sulcoflex or the piggy back type of intraocular lens to correct the refractive surprise now a 68 year old male with a wet age related macular degeneration age related macular degeneration very common uh, in this part so uh, he has taken multiple injection of lucentis without any effect this is the fundus picture whole of the macular region is gone in this case we require a telescopic type of intraocular lens so it has combination of mirrors so it transfers the rays into the better uh, part of the retina the macula is gone but the other part of the retina is healthy so through the mirror the image is formed in the healthy part of the retina now a case of dry age related macular degeneration so we need chromophores the hydroxy benzophenones this yellow lens will prevent the entry of the blue light into the eye so there will not be any more further deterioration of the macula but it has disadvantages because the blue light helps in the scotopic vision and it uh, maintains the circadian rhythm now the other case uh, he is a pilot in the air force very senior officer he is training young pilots and no astigmatism so we need 
the anti-glistening type of intraocular lens. These are the micro droplets formation in the intraocular lens after some time. So because of the glistening, there will be glare. So uh, not good for pilots. So there is a diamond cryolithic technique through which the surface of the intraocular lens is made smoothly and uh, prevents any chance of glistening. And it has a uh, tri point of fixation. The Indian lenses, they are uh, aligned in a single plane. But these intraocular lenses has tri fixed point. The haptic is in the front, and the optic is very close proximity to the posterior capsule. And there is a square edge in the boundary of the lens. So it prevents the lens epithelial cell migration. So it prevents the after cataract or the secondary cataract or the posterior capsular opacification. Now, a 48-year-old male with a astigmatism of four diopter. So there is a cylinder power along with the cataract. So we need a toric owl to correct the cylindrical power. In the first picture, you can see the uh, cataract along with the cylinder uh, power. In the second case, when it is treated with the hydrophobic aspheric, still the image is not clear. And the third picture is after treatment with the toric intraocular lens. The image is crisp and clear. And you can see there is a marker. And they are aligned in the steepest axis. The, al the alignment is very important because one degree of misalignment will lead to 3.3 degree of uh, loss of the power of the cylinder power. Now, a 23-year-old girl, very thin cornea, predisposed to dry, and she has a power of minus 15 diopter with astigmatism. In this case, we will put the implantable polymer lens. The advantages of ICL versus LASIK is it has a small micro incision. Is required in the LASIK, the incision is over one inch long. And in the ICL, you can add lens into the eye, whereas in the LASIK, it burns some part of the stroma. For correction of one diopter of the power, 20 uh, microns of the stroma is burnt. It is permanent, but it can be removable, the ICL. The LASIK, it can't be reversed. It doesn't induce any dry eye, the ICL, but the LASIK, as we know, it predisposes to dry eye. And the ICL, it uh, preserves the future options. And there is in the LASIK, it reduces the future options. Now something for the decoding and the uh, Mossad. So they require a very good accommodative power to decode the messages and to read the very minor details. So there is a new lens that is invented in uh, Israel. It is composed of silicone gel between two rigid plates with an opening on the front plate. With the increased vitreous pressure, the plate compresses, the polymer bulges through the anterior plate aperture, resulting in the increased curvature and in the increased accommodative power. It has a very good accommodative power of up to plus 30 to plus 50 diopter. Thank you.